Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, an incredibly powerful looping solution from Headrush. Let's get started. Today we're checking out the looper board from Headrush. Now this is one of the most powerful looping solutions that I've found. It does an amazing amount of things, super flexible, great for stage, great for studio, also great for writing your own music. At its most basic, the Headrush does four mono or stereo loops. Now we can arrange those loops and control them in a variety of different ways. We can also time stretch them, change the tempo, we can sync them to external MIDI, we have the ability to load in audio files, we can interface with a computer. There's so much that this box does. Let's take a quick tour. On the back panel, we have four inputs. Now these are combi jacks that'll accept microphone, line, and instrument level signals. You could simultaneously record your guitar, a vocal mic, and a keyboard in stereo and record onto the four tracks here and do everything all at once. Or you can work on one track at a time using either a microphone, a guitar, a keyboard, any line level signal. Or again, you can import audio into loops as well. So you have a lot of different sources you can access to create your looping inside the Headrush looper board. We have four outputs, two quarter inch and two balanced XLR. And we can route those in a variety of different ways. We could use them as four mono outputs and feed four different sources on stage, for example. Or you can set them up the way I have them here. I've got the quarter inch outputs in stereo feeding into a monitor so I can hear it in the studio. The XLR outputs are feeding into our zoom recorder so you can hear them on the video. We also have a headphone output. Now everything inside the looper board is completely routable. We can assign the inputs wherever we want, we can assign the outputs wherever we want. So we could, for example, route a click track just out of the headphones so that you could hear it on stage, and then use the other audio outputs to feed stage monitors or out to a front of house console. We have MIDI in, out, and through, and that can be used for a variety of applications inside the looper board. As I mentioned earlier, you can sync to an external MIDI clock or MIDI time code. You can also completely control all of the parameters inside the looper board using MIDI commands. We have an eighth inch audio input, and this would be used for something like an iPhone or another audio playback device, so you can route audio straight in and back out of the outputs. The looper board also features an internal backing track, and you can load audio files into that using USB. The backing track can play back and you can play along with it as well, so you have your option of either using an external player or load the files right into the looper board itself. We also have two USB connections here. You can hook up an external storage device like a thumb drive or an external hard drive and you can store files or import them into the looper board using that USB connection. You can also hook up your computer. In that situation, the looper board can serve as a two-in, two-out audio interface for your DAW so you can use this as an actual recording and playback solution with your computer. You can also use the computer to transfer audio files back and forth using USB. Finally, we have an SD card slot which can also be used for storage of audio and for loops. Now internally we have more than nine hours of storage built right into the looper board, so that'll store a lot of loops and a lot of audio files. If you need more than that or you want the flexibility to load different sets of presets and things back in and out, you can use USB or the SD card. This gives you virtually unlimited storage with the looper board. Despite how powerful it is, the looper board is deceptively easy to operate. We have just a few controls on the front panel. For the inputs, we have four level controls. For the outputs, we have a master volume control, a headphone volume control, and also a volume control for the aux input. The only other rotary control on the looper board is the encoder, which you push to enter different values. And this is where you change parameters or adjust settings. Of course, with a looper, you want to be able to control things with your feet for live performance or for recording in the studio. And the looper board is set up to be able to do that very efficiently. On the right, we have eight foot switches, so there's stop and undo, as well as record, play, and dub for each of the internal tracks. On the left, we have our master foot switch controls, and these are dual function. Normally, the upper left control is start, stop for all the tracks simultaneously. We can access the effects page by hitting the effects button. By hitting the function switch, we can access a variety of different parameters for our loop playback, and we'll look at those in just a second. We can exit using that same switch, and we have tap tempo available with the tempo switch. When we hit the function switch, the master becomes loop select. Now this allows us to step through different banks of presets and loops, and then we can load those into the different tracks as well using these foot switches. We can also access the backing track player by hitting function and backing track. Finally, if we hit the function switch and hit the last button, we get an onboard guitar tuner. To get deeper into controlling the looper board, we use the onboard touchscreen, which makes things very simple to navigate. We have a meter page for the four tracks. This displays the playback levels. We can access the individual loops as audio, so we can see what we've recorded or what we have loaded into each of the different tracks. 
This page is also where we set the operating mode for the looper board, and we'll come back to that in just a second. We have an onboard mixer where we can set the level for each track as well as the pan, an effects page that we can also access using a foot switch where we can assign effects to each of the tracks or to each of the inputs. And these are actually stacks of effects. So for example, if we choose a guitar type of effect, we can load a whammy effect, an overdrive, a wah, an amplifier, and so on. A lot of versatility for programming different sounds that you can access either while you're recording or while you're playing back. We have a variety of different effects types that we can choose from and we can also store our own presets. So if we load an effect on another track, we have chains of vocal effects, chains of guitar effects, chains of lo-fi effects, chains of dub effects, drums, as well as studio effects. So whatever situation you're in, whatever instrument you're recording onto the tracks, you can either assign the effects that you want on input or during playback to make them sound exactly the way you want them. Using the disc icon, we can save our loops. Finally, we have our general settings and there are a variety of things we can set here. We can set our audio routing, we can choose our inputs that are assigned to each track, how we're monitoring, where the tracks are routed, and the output levels. We also have loop settings, so we can set a tempo, loop lengths, quantize, whether the click is playing to record, playback, or both record and playback, set up our time stretching, and so on. We can load a new loop, edit the loop name. Our backing track player can also be accessed here. We can import and export loops. We have three pages of global settings. And finally, you can lock the screen so when you're playing live, you don't accidentally change a setting. Let's take a look at how easy it is to create loops using the looper board, as well as those different operating modes, which are so powerful when you're using this for creating your songs. The first thing we want to do is set up our click track. Now remember, you can set this up so the click only feeds into your headphones, only comes out of your stage monitors, or only feeds to front of house, or to all of those outputs. So you have a lot of flexibility for just hearing the click track, and your audience doesn't necessarily have to hear it. We do that under our general settings over here loop settings. We can set our click to only operate during the count in, only during playback, only during record, or during record and playback. So let's set it up by selecting, turning the encoder so that it's on both record and play, and we'll turn on the count in feature so we get one bar of count in before it starts recording. I've got this set up so that input one is feeding all four of our tracks so I can quickly switch between those if I want to access different tracks. Recording is as simple as hitting the record button. Now when I hit the record button again, it stops recording and goes immediately into playback. You can also set up the box so that it automatically goes into overdub mode when you hit that switch. I can record an overdub into the track by simply hitting the switch again. Hitting the stop switch, of course, stops playback, and if we hold that switch, we'll undo our last recording. We can also set up the foot switches so they peel away the last layer that you've recorded, or to completely clear the loop when you hold them down. We can overdub into each track as much as we like, or we can advance to the next track. So this is fixed mode, where all the tracks have the same length, the loops are loaded into those tracks and they play simultaneously, we can turn them on and off, we can adjust them with the mixer and so on. Great for creating layered compositions. Serial mode allows us to do more of a song arrangement type thing. So let's clear these out. We'll switch to serial mode. Now in this case, we can switch between the tracks by stepping on the foot switches. So I'll record two tracks here and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see we can have four different sections of our song on the four individual tracks and quickly switch between those to create a complete arrangement on stage. Remember, we can also overdub into each of those tracks as well. This allows us to put together complete arrangements using serial mode. 
In sync mode, we can record four tracks. They'll play back simultaneously, but those tracks can each have a different length. The looper board will automatically sync them together so everything works out properly. Serial sync mode is very useful if you want to have a backing track loaded into one of the loops and play along with it and switch to different parts of your song. So for example, in the opening section of this video, I had a drum track that was playing back in track one, and I had different parts of my song loaded into tracks two, three, and four, and could quickly switch among those. So in this case, track one always plays back, and then we can access the other three tracks however we like. In free mode, there are no restrictions on the length of the tracks or which tracks are playing back. So we can easily create ambient compositions, for example. You might load a pad sound into track one, a different pad sound into two, three, and four, and so on, and then bring those in and out. There's no requirements for things to be rhythmic or synced together. It all just operates completely freestyle. Once we have our tracks recorded, we can process the audio loops in a variety of different ways. Of course, we can add effects as we saw earlier, but we can also process the actual audio. Let's take a look at the eight different functions that are available to us. We'll hit the function key, and we can change the length. You can also change the speed of the audio playback. We can reverse playback. And note that we can do that individually for each of the four tracks or set all of them to reverse at the same time. We can have each of the tracks fade out independently and we can set the time that that takes. We can also transpose the tracks. We can also bounce tracks together to combine them onto another track. So we could record things into tracks one, two, and three, and then bounce the three of those onto track four, opening up one, two, and three for even more tracks. And finally, we can clear our tracks out. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Headrush Looper Board. We've really only scratched the surface of what you can do with this amazing creative tool with loops and audio. So many different ways you can work with it and so many different applications. It's an amazing solution for the stage and the studio. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.